Historical records indicate that Muslims were specially commissioned by Sri Lankan kings in the past for certain duties that they performed for the king and country. This video is about the coming of the Salagama people to this island and the role of the Muslims in facilitating their arrival. Salagama is a caste in Sri Lanka whose ancestors arrived here from the Indian village of Salia Mangalam or Salia Pattanam in Kerala, India. The Salagamas were also known as Salia, Hali and Chalia which is a common reference of them by the Europeans. It is generally held that certain castes like the Karava, Durava and the Salagama originated as professional groups of people from India who in the course of time became assimilated into the Sinhala population. They reside mostly in southern coastal areas, especially in the villages around Ratgama, Busa and Balapitiya in the Gaul district. The caste names Salia, Chalia and Hali all derive from the Sanskrit Salika, meaning weaver. The merchant named Periya Mudali Marika of Beruwala had, at the request of the king, brought over from South India a group of seven weavers. It is from this group of seven weavers that the Salagama caste is said to have sprung. The Muslims were specially requisitioned by the kings of Sri Lanka to perform various responsible tasks overseas, due no doubt to their loyalty, international linkages and navigational skills. Another such task executed by an eminent Muslim is recorded by Alexander Johnston and Bertolacci and is also embedded in popular tradition. Some historical reports state that the Salagama were brought in as weavers by the Muslims and others state that they were brought in as Brahmins to officiate in a royal coronation ceremony and thereafter they turned to the occupation of weaving fine cloth and became masters of it. The Salagama people also have family names ending with the suffix Muni which also means sage such as Edrimuni, Viramuni and Valimuni which may perhaps also suggest a Brahman connection since the Sanskrit Muni generally means an ascetic and very often refers to Brahman ascetics. Also in Tamil, the plural form Munivar means Brahmans. Although spinning and weaving were known and practiced in Sri Lanka from ancient times, the quantity of textiles produced was inadequate and the quality inferior when compared to the fine materials produced in South India and frequently imported to the island. Former Chief Justice of Sri Lanka Sir Alexander Johnston states that as the Sinhalese inhabitants of Ceylon were previous to the 13th century ignorant of the art of weaving fine cloth, which was then known to the Hindu inhabitants of the peninsula of India, the kings of Kandy offered great rewards to any of their subjects who would bring over from the peninsula some weavers for the purpose of introducing that art into Ceylon. Early in the 13th century, a Mohammedan merchant of Barbarine, a port between Kalambo and Point de Gaulle on the southwest coast of the island, induced by the offer brought over eight weavers from the peninsula in one of his trading vessels and landed them at Barbarine. On their arrival, the then king of Kandy received them with great kindness, had them married to women of distinction, gave them houses and lands, established a manufactory for them in the vicinity of his palace and conferred the highest honors upon their chief. Also interesting is Kiroz's record of what these folks had to say of themselves. 
We, the Chaliyas, came to this island in a pagal, which is a bagalo or Arab vessel of Moors which came into Chilau. We derived our origin from Chale and the port of Chale took from us the name it has today. It would appear from these accounts that the Salagama were introduced to the island as weavers of cloth by some Moor merchant or merchants at the request of the then reigning monarch. Of the accounts that report that the Salagamas were initially brought here as Brahmins for coronating the Sri Lankan king instead of as weavers is C. D. Z. Gunaratna who relies on the Heladiv Bamunuvata and old Ola leaf manuscript. He holds that the Salagama arrived in Sri Lanka in 1087 AD. These Brahmans, he says, were brought to Sri Lanka to perform the Abhisheka or the coronation ceremony of Vijayabahu I as borne out by the illustrations in the Salagama flag. Gunaratna records that the task of bringing the eight Brahmans to the country to perform the Abhisheka of Vijayabahu was entrusted to Periya Mudalimarika, who along with Kapal Udayar, Ahmed Kadiral Lebba, Uduman Lebba, Selezman Lebba, and 60 other Arabs embarked on ships bound to India and made their way to Salia Mangala, where they selected the eight Brahmans as well as an additional Brahman two of whom later died at sea. The seven remaining Brahmans, however, arrived at the port of Beruala. Here they received from the king a Sannasa, Mutukuda and a flag. They then departed to Anuradhapura to perform the Abhisheka. Having thus pleased the king, they were invited to settle in Poland Naruva, where they were espoused to aristocratic women by the king. It may have well been that the victorious King Vidyabahu I, after having defeated the Dravidians and united the country, finally set about to have a complete coronation in the ancient tradition that existed in King Devanampiyatissa's time, little doubt an imitation of the coronation ceremony practiced by the emperors of India such as Asoka. This would have necessitated the services of Brahmans well versed in conducting Abhisheka ceremonies and who would have thus had to be obtained from overseas. As time went on, these Brahmans having little else to do in a society that did not follow Brahmanical rites and hence did not need their services except perhaps on occasion, would have chosen to take to the weaving of cloth with which they subsequently became associated. The fact that the ancestors of the Salagama were conveyed to land in Beruala on the shoulders of the Moa sailors who had brought them here in a seafaring vessel is vividly illustrated in the scenes contained in the Salagama flag known as the Namediri Kodia. The flag suggests that these folk were afraid of wading in sea water, which ties with the orthodox Hindu belief that one loses caste by crossing the Kala Pani or black water, meaning the sea or ocean, which was why they had to be carried ashore by the Muslims and is particularly applicable to Brahmans. For being responsible for bringing the Salagama people into this country, the king honoured and rewarded the Muslim man who undertook and led this task. A copper sannasa bestowed on Periyamudalimarika of Gorakadua Beruala has it that the seven Brahmans were brought by Mudalimarika and former Chief Justice Alexander Johnston recorded that he had in his possession the copper plate grant given by the king to a great Mohammedan merchant residing in Beruala. The king was grateful to the merchant for the technical assistance that he had obtained for the country and rewarded him generously with lands, honours and privileges which remained in the same family for centuries. 
Peria Mudali Marika wasn't the only person rewarded with lands, privileges and honours. The copper grant bestowed on him displays that the king intended for Mudali Marika's descendants to receive the same privileges for as long as they live. The Sempota Patiram, an old copper sannas granted to one Peria Mudali Marika of Beruala in 1010 AC by a Sinhalese king extract states that so long as the sons and grandsons' children descending from him live, they are on their application to build mosques for the performance of their religious rites and that any land that they apply for is to be granted. The king decreed that all the descendants of Peria Mudali Marika will be relieved of the service of carrying palanquins for the crown and that the dignity of the family should be maintained undiminished. On their application, they will be allowed to erect mosques for their worship and any lands needed for the maintenance of the mosques will be granted. The descendants of the grantee will be allowed to carry on trade in any port and ship any merchandise. Over the centuries, the Salagama people have become masters of many professions. They were excellent at weaving and improved the quality of fine woven cloth produced by this country. Their Brahman status was also necessary for official royal events and later on they engaged in military activities and were highly involved and became seeped in the harvesting and production of cinnamon, one of Sri Lanka's biggest spice exports. For all this and more, we are grateful to the Salagama people. And although he is long gone, I'm sure the country is grateful too to Peria Mudali Marika and the other Moorish men who have been cited by countless reports as those seafarers who undertook the request of the king and brought the Salagama people, inviting them to become part of this country.